Welcome to Mike It Up with GoodBed.com's Jeff Cassidy. So when that's the case, it becomes harder just psychologically to make a change. And Mike Magnuson. If you're doing those things, you can be competitive long term. Just when you thought these number crunching data lovers couldn't get any nerdier, they started a podcast. And I know this is pretty controversial, but this is why we're having a podcast, right? But if you want to be smart about how the mattress shopping journey is changing and what retailers and manufacturers should be doing about it, well then, man, have you ever found your people? Because right now, it's time to mic it up. Oh, we never did the clap. We should do a clap just while we're in a pause thing. Ready? One, two, three. That was terrible. That wasn't even close <laughs> to at the same time. When I say one, it's like one, two, three, clap, okay? That's what I did. There might be a you delay. T- there was a huge delay. One, two, <laughs> wait, three. Wait, 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 wait. It, it's a second after the three? It's like as instead of saying four, it's going to be a clap. Right, so it's, it's actually okay. on four. It's on four, okay. Ready? One, two, three, that was bad. Okay. <laughs> okay. That felt pretty. That felt pretty delayed for me. But I don't know. We don't know what we're we doing don't know here. What, yeah. But nonetheless, we're podcasting. That much we know. Well, I, I the other personal note for me for having a podcast is kind of interesting. Is that my history with podcasting goes back a long time. I've never had a podcast, but I've actually my history with the podcasting industry goes back to about two thousand and six which was probably wow. about 10 years or when, more before the average person had ever even heard of podcasting. Yeah, when did podcasting start? Do you know that? Around 2006. <laughs> <laughs> it started as you started researching it. They are like, yeah, good, uh, yeah. I- so, good idea, so, Max. You invented podcasting. I did not invent podcasting, but I did anticipate podcasting and was out looking for what ultimately would become podcasting before podcasting had had become even a term people were using. That's that's interesting. By the way, I think that that topic is is good. I think it would be interesting for people to hear your background. I mean, people might see in your bio when you do a talk, they see that you work at an investment company, but they don't know the full detail. So I think it might it would be interesting for them to hear like your history in digital, yeah. me, digital media. I'll I'll sort of share that story as we go a little bit, a little maybe just because I don't want to sidebar completely into it. But suffice to say, I've got a, a long history with podcasting, so it's kind of exciting for me on that level to actually be doing a podcast of my own now. Of course, at this point in time, it feels like everybody and their dog has a podcast, so it's not exactly uh, that I was early to this. <laughs> I should <laughs> but... I should point point the microphone down at at my feet is a dog, so I think you're actually. Pretty right is, about that. is is your dog recording its own podcast uh, as we do if, ours? If she were my actual dog, obviously she would be, but she's somebody <laughs> else's dog. I'm just taking care of her for a few oh, months. So she, so. Got it. Well, anyways, welcome to the podcast. I want to just start by saying uh, I'm Mike Magnuson, founder of GoodBed.com. With me here today, uh, and hopefully as always in this podcasting journey of ours, is my uh, good friend and colleague, Jeff Cassidy who also works with me here at GoodBed. Hello, everybody. Excited to be here. (laughs) (laughs) On the podcasting tip. So we are starting this podcast. We should just tell everybody why we're starting this podcast. Really, just to kind of provide some insights to folks, primarily in the the industry, in the mattress and home furnishings industry, uh, on the consumer journey. We've got a whole lot of data that we collect uh, actual hard data, but also just a lot of soft data that we we get uh, through all of the many interactions we have with consumers at all the different points in their consumer shopping journey, um, who are shopping in many, many, many different ways. You know, people who are intending to uh, buy online, people who are looking to research online then buy in a store, people who uh, maybe have already been to a store, people who are looking to shop across online and offline to compare them different brands, different retailers. We've got everybody coming through GoodBed, and uh, they're asking us questions in any number of different ways. We're getting really great insights into kind of what their concerns are, what they're confused about, how they see this industry, how that's changing over time. And um, 
it's too much, frankly, for us to be able to share it at these kind of whatever these are, these annual betting conference or just the periodic webinars and stuff like that. So we thought, let's start a podcast that that kind of gives us an outlet to really share these insights, not only in more real time, but also um, just share more of these insights, because I do think that they're super pertinent for for the industry. Yeah, I, I'm very excited about that, because when each time you get asked, I mean, you basically get asked to do a talk at the betting conference every year. And prior to that conference, obviously way in advance, not the night before, you and I sit down and <laughs> and, and talk about uh, what to cover. And you always have so many things. And it's a process of having to cull out a lot. So there's a lot of great things that I'll kind of end up on the editing room floor, so to speak, from that brainstorm that I'm excited to help coax you to to get what's in your brain on those all those things out for people to hear because there's so many so many good ideas in that bald dome of yours. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like you said bald, but I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I missed. I think you meant to say shaved by choice. Right, right. It is um, a good, it is a good choice. Looks good. <laughs> but yeah, so so insights and then occasionally I'll pepper in kind of just my own distillation of those insights as to like how I process them and what recommendations I take away from those. So, you know, forgive me in advance for anything I, I share on that front in the form of recommendations and so forth. But that is that is part of what I hope we can offer here as well. And just to give people an idea, I mean, so we're going to try to keep these episodes pretty short, just keep them like kind of snack sized Maybe 10, 15 minutes uh, is kind of what our idea is. That way we can kind of keep each episode focused on something discreet, just something like a a snack-sized piece of information that you can take away as to how the consumers are operating in this category or maybe how you should be uh, operating and what you can do to better reach those consumers. Snack snack size, I like that. That's a good good term. Yeah, little little Scooby snacks, you know. (laughs) Some little Scooby snacks. (laughs) <laughs> and why don't you give an, an example? Do you have any uh, any topics already planned out and any in mind? And if so, maybe uh, just give a flavor of what an example theme for, for an episode might be. In this first uh, handful of episodes, we're going to try to uh, give people a little sense of how COVID, for example, has impacted the consumer journey for mattress shoppers. Uh, we're going to talk about, I mean, something we hear debated occasionally, whether in the press or within the industry, which is the question of, is brick and mortar retail kind of a walking dead? So that that's something we're going to dive into. And um, what about also the big key threats facing the mattress industry? That's another topic we feel like we can cover in more depth than we've been able to cover uh, previously. And for a lot of people, it's, you won't even have it's going to be insights you've never heard us be able to share because you weren't able to attend events where we've spoken in the past. And I also would love to tackle the topic of mattress returns. I think there's kind of an impending blowback that's that's going to happen at some point here with mattress returns. It's kind of gone. It pro- it's probably on the back burner at the moment with COVID just kind of being everyone's full attention. And rightfully so, it's really had a radical impact on the shopping journey. But that ultimately is going to subside. Um, And I think that at that point, we're going to take a look at where we are. And and if it's if it's anything like where we've been, and I think it'll be even more uh, more so after covid, uh, there's there's going to be a lot of returns happening. And And it's kind of a function of just in large part, the the growing share of the online channel and so I think there's just a, a question to be asked of, of like, what's the sustainable level of returns? And if we're operating in excess of that sustainable level, well, what does that mean? And what do we have to do to change that as an industry? So I think that's a topic that we can get into and maybe provide some, some thought leadership on what we think can be done on that. Yeah. And that leads also naturally or unnaturally as it were into the environmental question that we talk about a lot internally about what happens with those mattresses what's happening with lots of returns of foam mattresses where are they going what's the status of recycling diving in a little bit deeper into the environmental impact yeah we can hopefully provide some insights and maybe tools or or talking points that people in the industry can use on that front i think that would 
that would not only benefit them, but their consumers and, and ultimately the environment as well. Yep. No doubt. Great. Well, that's kind of what we wanted to share today. We're just going to kind of uh, introduce ourselves and introduce this this podcast. Hopefully, uh, we will. Um, <laughs> all I was thinking about right there was was that my wife just walked in and how much she hates this microphone <laughs> and how how, yeah. uh, <laughs> so how this, this, this thing whole is podcast like, experience uh, might not uh, make yeah. it past this yeah. first chat. <laughs> What you should do is direct all your fan mail to my wife and let her know how important this podcast is to you and how much you enjoy it so that maybe, just maybe, this microphone can find a permanent space, if not in my office, at least in my garage. (laughs) Oh, man. Uh, Uh, I think all the um, husbands in the world can appreciate uh, kind of the, 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 the... the doghouse that yeah. you're going to be in. <laughs> I mean, I think the husbands can appreciate too that this looks cool, like a recording studio. But I, I guess, uh, I guess, maybe it, it's not as aesthetically pleasing as other more carefully chosen pieces of furniture. So, anyways, all right. Well, it's great to uh, it's great to kick this off, and we're looking forward to, uh, to again having this this dialogue with many more folks, and also to being connected with the the Dos Marcos guys. You know, obviously those are good friends of ours, Mark and Mark. They suck at podcasting though, so we're excited to finally be able to kind of <laughs> bring some quality entertainment and information to this industry. So that's that's another thing we're we're looking forward to. All right, so All let's right. wrap it up. With that said, stay tuned for more of Mike It Up. We're out.